You're listening to Neo Cash Radio, where we discuss the future of money today. In the studio with you, it's JJ, Darren, and Pedro. Bitcoin Cash is born, introducing Neo Cash Crypto Radio in Russian, and blockchain tech is preferred by six out of ten corporations. All this and more on episode 217 here on August 2nd, 2017. In the traditional markets, we have gold up to $1,267, silver's down to $16.56, oil is up. To ninety forty nine dollars and sixty one cents, and the Dow is up to twenty two thousand and sixteen points. And the thirty year Treasury yield is down this week uh, to two point eight five four. In the crypto markets, Bitcoin is up to twenty six uh, two thousand six hundred eighty nine dollars. And new to our crypto markets, Bitcoin Cash is at three hundred ninety six dollars. It's changing so rapidly. Uh, the Litecoin up to forty two dollars and twenty three cents. Ethereum is up to twenty dollars and twenty cents. And Dash is down to one hundred eighty two dollars. Just a reminder that you can tune into Neo Cash Radio every Wednesday night. Don't want to miss a single moment of awesome Neo Cash content, including special episodes and bonus interviews. Subscribe to our podcast on Google Play Music, iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, YouTube, Podcast Addict, and more. Well, yeah. the top story of the day is Bitcoin Cash is born. That's right. And from the BitcoinCash.org site, quote, at 1824.41 UTC via BTC pool produced a 1.9 megabit um, megabyte but, yeah. BCC block which was not valid on the legacy Bitcoin network. This marked a clean break and the birth of Bitcoin Cash, unquote. And that's right. Not only that, it, I mean, just today they they mined a four megabyte block. That's right. That's awesome. I think I had a transaction in there, JJ. Nice. Well, we had a live stream going from 8 a.m. Eastern until around 11 a.m. It turns out the first block took more than six hours to mine. Uh, we had a good time, though, and we had special guests join us, Bruno, Daniel and Michael. So we had uh, yeah, that was my first time meeting Bruno. It was really nice meeting him, and it was really great to uh, talk to Daniel since he started serving and as in the capacity of translating to Espanol. That's right. That, that's Spanish. And yeah, Pedro, you were there too. Yeah, absolutely. That was uh, very fun to uh, to be watching and and waiting. And uh, the the most fun I had was uh, talking to Bruno, Bruno and Daniel. So that was a great time. I'm glad we were able to connect with them. Yeah, so Bruno sort of gave a little bit of a, his history with his experience in Brazil uh, growing up with, I think he said, five or six different currencies. Six. I six think. different yeah. currencies. Yeah, it was a lot. So uh, it was a great discussion, a great and, time. And, of course, Michael was there as well. And, and uh, we'll have more about Michael in a, in a few minutes. But uh, as of this episode, the Bitcoin Cash Network appears as such. There are, I believe, is it 15 or 15 blocks mined so far? That's good. Uh, around 63 nodes. The largest block, as Darren said, was over 4.6 megabytes. And there is a, a bunch of, I guess, details that are missing from what we can glean. We, we can't really see the difficult. I mean, we can see the difficult. We can't see the hashing power at the moment. Right. But we can, we can conclude. I mean, the difficulty hasn't changed. It's the same as the Bitcoin network now. And... With 15 blocks over what, uh, what, 12, 7, 18 hours? Uh, right. W- that would put us at about, that would put a Bitcoin Cash at about an eighth of the of the whole block network. Well, Pedro, mm-hmm. you uh, were you were looking into the, the Bitcoin Cash mining difficulty? Right. So, like, why is it taking so long? So, uh, basically, Bitcoin Cash has a, a new difficulty drop feature. So, when, di- when they did a split, that chain still had the, the high difficulty as, as Bitcoin, but with very few miners on it. So uh, what they instituted was this difficulty drop feature. So if the hash power drops and the blocks become too slow, then the mining difficulty lowers to compensate. Uh, the, pri- the drop is based on an averaging of block times called medium time passed. If six blocks take more than 12 hours, then difficulty will be lowered. The difficulty drop is triggered based on six blocks taking longer than 12 hours to mine as measured with MTP. The MTP of the last block is compared to the MTP six blocks ago. If they are more than 12 hours apart, then the difficulty drops by 20%. After the hard fork, Bitcoin Cash's hash rate will drop from the combined pre-fork block, Bitcoin hash rate. Exactly how much hash rate it gets is open to speculation, of course. If it gets less than 8.3%, then the difficulty drop will be triggered. The drop could still be triggered with more than that based on variance. So as time goes on, this you know it, it, it should get better. Uh, the difficulty drop does not happen immediately. Because of the way MTP delays measurement, uh, the, the drop won't happen until at least six blocks after the first slow block. 
at least the first six blocks after the fork will be at full difficulty. Wow. Yeah, and then one final thought about Bitcoin Cash is um, if you listen to the live stream, we talked for a moment. You have some more information on that. Yeah, yeah. We'll get to that part in a moment. Um, But, uh, yeah, so basically what happened, if you look back at the block history, there was a a nearly 13-hour gap in, in which blocks were produced. And so... The uh, that block in the next six have had their their uh, their difficulty. I mean, wait, they're, their difficulty they're not, adjusted flag. I think is, yes, is the they're flag, flagged. They're flagged, they're flagged for difficulty adjustment. So that yeah. each of them is going to be a, getting a twenty percent adjustment. So we should see by the time the six blocks are finished that the actual difficulty is is fa- fallen dramatically. Well, twenty percent. Yes. Well, twenty percent per block. Oh, so wow. each block will get a twenty percent. Deduction, so so it steps down each block, mm-hmm. and uh, so then you know it's like <laughs> some there's even a, even a post and and a, a, a fun uh, Jimmy Song article on Medium. Um, like, why would they do this? Well, I mean, if if they wanted it to be easier to mine, then this is how you do it. Yeah, I mean, they, they, right now there's a, a two week mining period, and if if the blocks are taking like an hour to come out. Like like that's uh, generous. Uh, they've been taking longer than that. Um, then uh, let's see if it takes an hour. Then that two weeks all of a sudden is is twelve weeks. Right. And you can't wait twelve weeks for the difficulty adjust on a on a currency on a network like this. No. So uh, putting something like this in is is kind of um, just really necessary uh, to get over this hurdle of being in the minority chain. Right. Well, and speaking of minority chain, uh, Gavin Andresen on Twitter, uh, a quote from him, if BCH, or as we say, BCC, hash power is greater than BTC, I'll start referring to it as just Bitcoin. That's right. And he also included a link to his his uh, blog entitled De- A Definition of Bitcoin. Right. And I, I like that uh, that way of going about things because it shouldn't be just people in a room who may or may not be developers deciding what Bitcoin is? It should be that uh, kind of a, a, a general decision. I mean, like if, a fact driven, yeah, measurable. If, if the miners are behind it, then that's Bitcoin. If the miners aren't, then it's not. So Bitcoin Cash, by that definition, is not Bitcoin. I, I specifically said the minority chain. That's what it is right, right now. So, and and that's you know the, the beautiful thing is that things change and and they might it might not change. Well, it yeah. might it might change. It doesn't matter. But he his sort of defines it. As the the ledger that uh, and it, he gives a couple parameters, but basically the ledger that has the most cumulative double SHA two fifty six proof of work. So he's also defining the mining uh, proof of work algorithm, right? Right, so, right. So right. if the if they change, if so, like Core was talking about changing that double SHA two fifty six, right? right? Mm-hmm. So I think he's also sort of <laughs> indicating that if they change that. Proof of work uh, structures, and he doesn't think that's Bitcoin either. Right. It, right. it generally couldn't be because there's ASICs, which are really doing the computations on the main chain, on both these chains right now. And if you change the proof of work, then it would be back to CPUs and GPUs, which aren't going to be quite as computationally uh, along as these ASICs, as what we see in a developed market. And we touched a little bit about this on, on the live stream yesterday of uh, people that have first, second, third generation ASICs that are no longer, you know, worth the power to mine Bitcoin. But if the difficulty drops on Bitcoin Cash, you know, maybe there's a second life for these ASICs. Well, yeah. I, oh, I want a second life from these ASICs for, for Dash. Um, you, every time you do a transaction, you have to hash it twice with SHA-256. So I, I, once Bitcoin kind of has trouble and, and goes down, I think they should. we should just swoop up these ASICs and, and put them in our uh, master notes <laughs> for, for Dash. <laughs> Darren, Darren works for Dash. Yeah, I do, full disclosure. <laughs> but I, I am uh, pretty excited about Bitcoin Cash. And uh, I, I think well, that I, I honestly think SegWit is an untested technology. I mean, of course, it's been deployed on network on uh, Litecoin, but if you look, there's very few SegWit transactions, and so we, we're still uh, in the process of seeing how this is going on in the wild. wild. So you're skeptical. Yeah, I'm skeptical, like always. Well, let's talk about a couple scenarios here quick before we move on to other topics, because the, there's a lot of questions left about what's going to happen with Bitcoin Cash and what uh, various things. Well, at, at the moment, of course, if you have a um, wallet out there, 
and you haven't yet been able to split your Bitcoin Cash and your BTC, then you should definitely look for the uh, wait for the update from your wallet maker and then get make sure that update applies properly and then follow the instructions to split out your coins. Yeah, I just did it on Coinomi. I actually had to type in the uh, the, the the path to the Bitcoin uh, key, uh, the Bitcoin key, and uh, and then my Bitcoin cash showed up there. So I actually, you know, it was cool. It was neat. So Coinomi, update it now. You can go ahead and uh, get both sides. Uh, just as a housekeeping tool, I would go ahead and send maybe Bitcoin cash to yourself at a different address. So that way, um, so that way uh, you've got a, a clean split on that one. Yeah, that's smart. It's a good idea. Uh, so, you know, just sort of looking at the scenario is like uh, if, the, if the difficulty drops as we're expecting it to drop now, then the blocks won't be so difficult to get in. One of the problems right now with buying and selling Bitcoin Cash is that, well, there was a 12 hour block where there wasn't any movement. So the market is there's not a lot of liquidity because the blocks aren't coming out in 10 minute increment. Incre- incre- uh, yeah, incre- intervals. yeah, exactly. I mean, I sent a transaction to myself last night and it didn't confirm till like this afternoon so yeah like that that is an issue right now uh so as but the, it confirmed the very next block <laughs> <laughs> unlike bitcoin well <laughs> it's true <laughs> uh so yes as the as the difficulty drops down the the timing of the blocks will get closer to 10 seconds 10 minutes 10 yeah. minutes i'm sorry and uh then the network will perform more like the current bitcoin network and uh i i you know I think there's going to be a lot of people looking to sell their Bitcoin because of some, as we talked about on the podcast, the um, almost religious craze over Bitcoin being the ultimate coin. Right. Um, the, you know, I, I often referred to as Bitcoin maximalists, uh, which I'm not saying that they're, they're right or wrong. I mean, they, they could be the right, uh, the winners as far as I, I know. I just don't, I don't feel like making an absolute uh, position decision right now. Um, there are other sides of the coin, so to speak. So uh, take what this one, for example. A Reddit post calls on freedom-loving people to eschew SegWit for the liberty offered by Bitcoin Cash. And, of course, there are crypto enthusiasts who are preferring to avoid the Bitcoin battle altogether and are focusing their attention on other blockchains. And there yeah. are a lot to choose from. There are a lot. It is crazy. I mean, uh, th- this, this whole dispute has taken so long, and I, I actually kind of hedged a little bit during this and i mean it's been years ago and uh it's, i'm it, it, i'm glad to see that this is the resolution even though this is not a perfect thing but i i really think let the market decide i mean now you have your your choice pick, right pick one right um you don't you can use both you can use one you can use the other you can use an altcoin whatever just you got your choices now uh and i think in, in, all in all if there's more choice the consumer or the the uh, person using the service is going to win. I don't like this term consumer, JJ. Right, right. Yeah, so, so I mean, basically, I think as soon as Bitcoin uh, Cash starts producing more frequent blocks, you will see more movement. If people want to get rid of it, it will happen. The sell-off will happen. Yeah. Yeah. The buy-off, whatever happens will happen. But the key right now and what we're waiting for is the, the mining algorithm difficulty to adjust downward so that the blocks come out more frequently. I'm... Really, uh, in, I like Bitcoin Cash just on the the way it's set up, I'll, I'll just be, for that reason. But I, my main concern, JJ, is that Bitcoin Cash might not uh, get the market adoption. They might not get the exchanges. They might not get the merchants. They might. That's that's my the only unknown in my right. case. I mean, the, the, the merchants already set up for Bitcoin. You know, Coinbase is still going to go with the Bitcoin uh, the uh, the majority chain, which I guess they should. But, uh, I mean, other things like Bitrex, uh, if you had Bitcoin on there, it was split. I had like 100 Satoshis that got split. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's split into um, each of them. So, uh, so it, it's interesting to see what market actors are uh, and how they, what the market actors are and how they respond. So, right. Darren, you brought, you brought up Coinbase. And, um, you know, as a reminder, if you had Bitcoin in a wallet before the split, you now have equal amounts of uh, Bitcoin cash unless, you know, you don't own the private keys and then you're at the mercy of uh, whoever does. So and I, I believe Coinbase announced that they wouldn't give you the Bitcoin they cash. They will not give you the Bitcoin cash. So everyone is now wondering, well, you know, Coinbase has many, many Bitcoins from, you know, customers. So what happens with all that Bitcoin cash? So there's a news story that came out that uh, Coinbase customers are threatening to sue over Bitcoin cash. 
uh, because Coinbase has clearly stated the company is not taking customers' Bitcoin cash for themselves, but its decision to withhold the new currency has led to one prominent legal scholar to suggest the company will be sued. Uh, and it looks like that's what's going to happen. An activist group which claims Coinbase's decision is akin to a brokerage withholding new shares from its investors warns it will commence a class action suit after August 15th if the company doesn't release the Bitcoin cash. Wow. So if somebody was not aware of this and they thought, great, I'm going to have equal amounts of Bitcoin cash, and then, oh, wait, all the Bitcoin I have in my Coinbase account, I, I don't have access to that. Well, you know, who who has that those Bitcoin cash? I don't know. I mean... They did send out a, a message to their customers about two weeks ago, maybe, but like two weeks before this happened. So they did. Well, and there was also issues, announce. yes, leading up to issues of people withdrawing. There was issues with getting into U.S. dollars from uh, Bitcoin. Um, the, but yes, they they did tell their customers that they're they're not going to service it. And but yeah, there were problems with drawing right before, and it's like, well, if you're not going to let me use it the way I want to. Uh, you at least got to give it back to me. That's it. And and they're not giving. They didn't give it back. Whether it was, it, I don't think it was per, uh, purposeful. But uh, yeah, I, I I do I can see a world of hurt for Coinbase right now. And then e- even if they do decide in a couple of weeks, okay, we'll we'll give you a Bitcoin Cash. Well, what if it went down? Right. So now you've lost value in what you've yeah, found you. Yeah, you've lost possible gain. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and because they're a US company, you know, the lawsuits there's just they're, they're wide open. Now, you know, it's like the I'm really hoping in the next few days they're going to come out with uh, a plan on how to provide their customers well, with I think Bitcoin that's cash. their best bet. I mean, just to just get it over with, deal with it and then say here it is, you can, you can withdraw it to somewhere else, but you can't do anything else with else with it and, and once that's done, it's closed. And then you can just call it done. But I think that's their their best bet. Yeah, I don't think Coinbase wants this cloud over their head. Right. And and I think with uh, Bitcoin Cash putting in that replay con- um, replay protection, and I think Coinbase could actually recover the Bitcoin Cash pretty easily. Right. Uh, so that's, that's, that's one good thing. Well, uh, moving on, we've talked almost half the show about Bitcoin Cash, and there's always going to be more news, but we've got more things to talk about here on Neo Cash Radio. In fact, introducing Neo Cash Crypto Radio in Russian. Uh, Neocash radio subscribers may have noticed a strange thing this past week when a version of the Neocash podcast was published in Russian. Yuri and Michael have recorded the first episode of their new podcast, Neocash Crypto Radio, in Russian. Congratulations to both of them for taking this big step. And JJ, are we going to get a different RSS feed so that our listeners can listen to Neocash Radio in the language of their choice? That's right. In fact, they are going to have their own RSS feed. They're going to establish this first uh, pilot run um, it was like six and a half minutes, and we ju- they just wanted to publish it and be done, and so they could iterate and do better. But yes, I do apologize if that upset you. But um, yeah, but you know, in I the understand. end, in the end, it's just it's just words, and it's uh, yeah, and and we're just excited to have them on board. Oh yeah, it was great. And Michael, uh, as I mentioned earlier, joined us in the uh, the live stream for a little while, and Michael knows a lot more about Segwit than I do, so it's good to have him on board and to have his knowledge with us, and of course. Yuri, uh, it, it just the, the two of them together on the, on the show, um, I, think they, I think they could do a really good job. Oh, Yuri, so much fun, just yeah. personally. I, I mean, I'm not sure how he sounds in Russian, but uh, anyway. Well, you can listen to it. I yeah. can listen to it, but I have no <laughs> idea what the emotional overtone of what he's saying is. All right. Well, also on our neocashradio.com website, you may have noticed the language switcher in the upper left-hand corner of I the, did. the desktop version. Is up to four. That's right. We're well on our way to, toward building a truly global podcast. If you're out there listening and wondering how you can be a part of this growing enterprise, send me an email at jj at neocashradio.com. So currently we've got Spanish, Portuguese, uh, Russian. Do we have Russian? Yeah. And uh, what's the other one? English. English. Oh, okay. <laughs> the default <laughs> language. <laughs> okay. Excellent. So uh, while we're on the subject of Russia... Uh, St. Petersburg is reportedly challenging Moscow to become Russia's crypto capital. Wow. So on August 16th through the 17th, the city will host a hyper, hypothon, hypothon. 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 With S in the middle. With dozens. It's, 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 hypothon. Where, do, where dozens of uh, pre-ICO projects will be pitched to angel investors. The event, supported by the Waves platform, will will be open not only to blockchain professionals, but as enthusiasts as well. So it sounds okay. like a... 
conference, like a yeah. So yeah, it's like Saint like a Petersburg. trade show. Saint Petersburg walks up to Moscow. Hey, what's up? Right. <laughs> Look and, at this. Well, and once I again, the Waves platform is center stage with this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, I, we definitely have to spend an, an episode talking about the Waves platform because All I think right. they have a lot of uh, enthusiasm behind their platform, and they're working with a lot of different people. And, uh, and we touched a little bit on during the. Um, live stream about uh you know having the the show in russia uh in in one year so much has changed in in russia as re, as their as it regards to blockchain right? yeah oh. about a year ago they were looking at banning it didn't want anyone to use it and then they've really done a, a 180 and, and embraced it uh, if you remember about a month or so ago vitalik was in uh in russia and actually uh, personally met vladimir putin and now we're hearing a lot coming out from russia about you know the russian government looking to uh, embrace blockchain so this can bring a lot of efficiency to that economy yes all right and uh talking about one year ago pedro uh, bitfinex hack anniversary and introducing s finex s finex yeah the, bo- the blog's post starts out acknowledging the hack we covered back in episode 167 the hackers made off with 119,756 bitcoins, at the time worth about 72 million. Mm. Well, today they're worth 323 million dollars. There's controversy over this reimbursement of funds due to both the choice to use U.S. dollar tethers and the fact that they only cover the cost at the time of the hack. Right. They go on to make an announcement about S Phoenix. Their goal is to uh, not just create a decentralized smart contract Ether and ERC-20 token exchange, but to create a platform, quote, hybrid community and information hub for developers, traders, and enthusiasts, unquote. The Nectar token is announced on the Phoenix page. It is described as a loyalty reward, and in the long term, the token holders will have some say in the governance of the exchange. Initially, they will mostly be owned by Phoenix. So it's uh, another ex- decentralized exchange coming. And an interesting note, it, 167 comes up a lot because of this bit, Bitfinex hack and the, the ramifications. But that was for the Randy's first episode oh, in studio. I miss Randy. Yeah. yeah, we all miss Randy. Come back here. There we go. Yeah. It's just for you, Randy. Come back. He's enjoying, he's enjoying yeah. traveling the world. Have so don't worry, don't worry too much about you, Randy. You have fun, you crazy kids. So uh, ask Phoenix, um I need to point out that Ether Delta already exists and yeah, totally does. has no baggage whatsoever. Yeah, no problem, no no and token to I've, it. They no. charge they charge a fee. They're upfront about it. it. It's it's a very it's a very good proof of concept that you can do an exchange on Ether. I don't think it does any any off chain tokens, but it, that is quite a it is a all feat ERC twenty and yeah, Ether. Yep. Yeah, it's uh, it, you really can't do it securely if it's off chain. Or well, and it's, it's all smart chain. contracts, so it's yeah. amazing that it's there's no person, no uh, board, no no yeah. governance needed, right? Yeah, they, <laughs> they just keep adding, you know, they just keep adding new tokens as they come out. I mean, it, it might be possible to make one of these ether contracts actually respond to what another chain does, and then it will go off the hook. I guess is the right term, <laughs> but but um, but uh, right now there's not a good way of of you know having a Ether payment that's contingent on a Bitcoin payment or whatever. Well, uh, okay, we've got a couple of stories here left. Uh, AMD shares up as miners ship Boeing 747s full of graphics cards. Okay. Wow. Shocking. What, what, what is that? Is that well, the... Advanced Micro Devices, AMD, yeah. has enjoyed a rising stock price on the tide of cryptocurrency mining. Shares are up over 152% over the last 12 months. Oh. Thanks to AMD, many new cryptocurrencies have been mined. Uh, so AMD makes the graphics cards that run pretty much the script mining language. And initially, AMD graphics cards were the only ones capable of handling the script algorithm. And uh, this algorithm was made famous initially by Litecoin, although there was two other coins that used it first. Uh, currently, a majority of altcoins or basically anything that's not Bitcoin uh, uses GPUs for mining, and most of them use the script algorithm. Yeah, I mean, AMD's been really, really strong uh, right from the beginning uh, versus uh, NVIDIA, and that's just a design architecture um, difference. But the latest NVIDIA um, Pascal-based cards, so like the 1080s, the 1070s, uh, they've come a long way and, and can now compete with AMD. The hash rate uh, from you know, my recollection the last time I looked at this a few weeks back is the hash rate might not be on, on par with AMD all the time, but the power is, is much lower, so it's a more efficient card. So 
Uh, AMD is still the the king if you want raw hashing power. And you know when when crypto when all these altcoins went up this past spring, uh, created a big demand for miners to get their hands on on these cards, and some of them were selling above retail. Yeah. And uh, they actually, some of them too would sell on, like buying used cards online, obviously uh, it's, it's, you could still get a lot of money for some of these cards, even though they've been mined on. Um, so we got, Pedro, you got a story for us here. Yeah, so Juniper Research reveals six out of 10 large corporations seek to integrate blockchain technology. This wow. is an article from ETH News. Reported on July 31st, a study by analyst firm Juniper Research identifies that nearly six out of every 10, uh, 57%, of large corporations with more than 20,000 employees are or will be developing strategies involving blockchain technology in order to meet the new, uh, you know, the new global technological trend that's, you know, sweeping across these industries. Sure. Uh, the research indicated that companies with a need for transparency, which are currently dependent on paper systems or engaged in high volume of transactions, would best be able to apply blockchain technology to suit their needs. And and you can do this by giving uh, regulators uh, like read-only access to their blockchain. Right. Um, this is very good for charities. You know, if charities have a public uh, blockchain address, Bitcoin, you know, Litecoin, whatever, um, that's auditable by regulators if, if that needs to be. So that address is identified and, you know, they can see where the money is going. So uh, strictly on efficiencies of processes, you know, there's tremendous potential with blockchain. Yeah. Great, yeah, it's, wonderful. That's, I mean, the whole, the whole, anything that that's paper systems, like, man, that's that's totally blockchain related and whatnot. So, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens with that. But so I have a, a technology update. Ner I want to expand on that Coinomi thing I was talking Go about. Go right ahead, Darren. So, uh, uh, so uh, Coinomi and a lot of other wallets use what is called uh, BIP forty four, and and that's uh, using something else with the HD keys. Uh, hyper-deterministic wallets is what they call them. Okay. Well, the hyper-deterministic wallets are pretty amazing. You you can take a HD wallet and then find out the zeroth and the first and the second, and each of those is an HD wallet. And so from each of those, like the zero, you can do the zero and the first and second, and then the first, you can do the zero, first, and second, and the third, second, you know, does this... So basically... With with an HD wallet, you have the children, and you have grandchildren, and you can have great grandchildren, and so on. Wow! And, and, it, and it keeps going that way. So if you want to, if you have uh, Bitcoin in your Coinomi wallet, um, if it was there before the split, um, before the fork, you can uh, split them up right internal to your Coinomi wallet. You add Bitcoin Cash, but when you add it, you have to go to the advanced settings and change the uh, derivation path of the HD key. I think it would be normally 44H slash 0H slash 145H for Bitcoin Cash. If you change that 145 to zero, then it'll go to the Bitcoin thing. Yeah, Coinami has some instructions on their website. Yeah, so too, you, you can, can look at that. So, But anyway, these I had to learn about HD keys recently, JJ. So Well, that, they're pretty They're, they're pretty, pretty amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. I didn't even, I, I didn't know it was All this. All 12 until, seed words, yeah, right? Yeah, 12 seed words, which is like each word's 11 bits. And that's, you know, it's pretty, I think it's about the best you can do uh, to for an interface between uh, computer and random numbers and people. Right. It's very good. Well, the the markets are, are just they're really volatile now. We're not really going to go into pricing and talk about price and all that stuff. But this uh, this shakeup with the, the the split, you know, it's sort of it had this sort of chilling effect during you know our live stream. We noticed all the a lot of the blocks were coming up very small and very fast uh, with with Bitcoin. But then if you look at the markets in general, it's just everyone's still in this this this. This phase of it's a cool it's a cooling right so yeah. everyone is kind of waiting to find out what's going to happen and like with any market uncertainty can can cause a chilling effect but I think as as we see that you know Bitcoin's not going anywhere and Bitcoin Cash is is new to the table um, I think things will settle down yeah yeah I think I think we're at that phase now where things are calming down so if you're out there stressing out about your coins or your where where the prices are and all that stuff I. Are you really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bit, uh, no, the, the miners have not abandoned Bitcoin by any stretch no. of the yeah, imagination. Yeah, don't, don't do anything rash or quick. Uh, you got to think these things through 
and understand what you're doing. That's right. And always uh, look for more answers. Look for more research. You know, there's, there's a lot of information out there, and you can find it if you look for it. And you can also listen to Neocache Radio. That's right. You can tune in every Wednesday to Neocache Radio as we have more and more information about not only Bitcoin Cash, but Ethereum and, and, and Dash. Dash and, and, yes. and all of those coins. All the blockchains. All the blockchains. Uh, and also, we have a new donation address for BCC. If you want to throw your BCC away at our glowing gro- global podcasts, well, uh, let's go to support Neocash Radio, where we discuss the future of money today. 